Hi, hello, my name is Sana. If you are new here, and today I wanted to do just a simple Q&A. I've noticed that a lot of you still message me with questions about Minerva through DM, and they are pretty repetitive, so I figured why not just address some of them in a video so that they're accessible to everybody. I'm noticing my battery is out of charge, so I'm going to switch that, and then we will get right into it. <laughs> So I'm just gonna open up Instagram and look at my requested messages, the ones that I haven't replied to yet. So the first one, which actually inspired this entire video was a question about grades. So what is the minimum grade requirement for Minerva? Should I apply if I have X, Y, Z number for my IB score or for school? And I think there's like two parts to this answer. The first is honestly, there's no harm in trying. I think if you really want to go to Minerva and that's something that like you think you would be suited for, the application is free and the application is also pretty quick. You could probably just do it in a day. So if you're not sure and you don't want to waste too much time on it, I mean really why not? <laughs> just do it. It's also quite fun, like the challenges are really engaging and different from other applications so it might be a little bit of a, like, a good break from the other kinds of things you're working on and if you want to know more about the application then you can look at my Minerva playlist. I outline how the application works in detail in those videos. So I'll just send you over to those ones. And then the second part of my answer will be about, I guess the academic difficulty and like rigorousness of Minerva. I think it's great to just apply, go for it, try but also i guess ask yourself why your grades are maybe lower or not what you would like them to be at your current school because let's say you do have like a 30 in ib and you would like you know a 37 well why are your grades not at a 37 is it because you don't really like school you're not really trying that hard is it because it's actually difficult for you um are you just being a little lazy but like it's just like related to other challenges in your life and that's maybe not representative of you as a whole like ask yourself why your grades are lower and i think it's really important because minerva is really difficult it is a really challenging academic program it's really time consuming it can be overwhelming um and coming from someone who i did pretty well in ib um i did apply with pretty low grades um, just because my predictions were really low for other reasons, but um, coming from someone who does like school overall and likes academics, I would say it's a lot for me. Maybe I'm not the person who likes it the most, but I think most people at Minerva um, are driven to learn and curious people. So um, just, I guess, just ask yourself those questions. If you're not doing good in your current institution, you might also struggle at Minerva. But I'm not trying to deter you. I'm just trying to like be realistic about the situation. Kind of jumping off of the last question, how does IB transition into Minerva? I think IB is a really, really great preparation for Minerva because IB is quite overwhelming. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of, I guess, breath because you are kind of doing all of the six groups of subjects. So I do think it's a really great preparation. You don't need it, but I think it helped me. And especially if English isn't your first language, I think it's a really, really great thing to have. If I compare the two, which one's harder? I would say they're pretty on par and then university is a little harder because it's university. Like the topics are more challenging. But yeah, if you've done IB, I think you're in a really good position for Minerva. The next question is, how much do I like my university experience? I get this question a lot and it's really hard to just like say it in a short message. Overall, I really like Minerva. Personally, I chose it because, well, there's a lot of reasons, but for one, I don't like the typical academic like structure. I didn't perform very well in exams. I mean, I still did okay, but I hated them. It was just like really anxiety inducing for me. Um, I always preferred like spending more time on projects. And um, another thing is that I felt like it was really easy to fall behind because if I just had like a bad day, um, I would just not go to class and that just led to more stress and like having to catch up with studying and things like that. So with Minerva, it like really keeps you accountable because you can't really miss your classes 
if you do, you have to do makeup work. So there's kind of a system built in place so that you can't really be lazy. Um, it's or at least it's really hard to be. And then the other thing is just like the traveling aspect, which obviously I think is like a huge appeal for most people. I always wanted to study abroad. I really wanted to still travel. And I felt like it was a good way to combine the two. Looking back, I think I would have been really happy in a more like traditional university as well. But I do really like my experience and I wouldn't change it. Sorry for the intermission. I keep getting interrupted, it's okay. Okay, I get a lot of questions for both PwC and Minerva just about like how to write a good application. And it's hard for me to say because, I mean, that's like very broad. I would just say overall, don't try to be what they want you to be. I think being yourself and trying to pinpoint some unique details about yourself is a really great way to stand out. Again, it's really hard for me to give like good advice on this and I would say if you watch my other videos, um, either for UWC or Minerva and like how to get into those schools, I think I go into more detail about like more technical things you can do, but I don't know, just like be yourself. Don't overthink it too much. Just kind of write and then after you've written, look back and try to refine and make it more concise. And um, you know what, at the end of the day, they're probably gonna just skim it. So you need to say stuff that's like a bit, I don't know, like gripping and unique. That's how you stick out from the crowd. I get questions about scholarships from Minerva specifically. I've said this before in a different video, but you don't have merit-based scholarships, it's only means-based, so they just take your parents' financial documents and they do that calculation for you and they guarantee that they'll give you what like you need. I don't think realistically it is enough, um, I'll be honest. I think, unfortunately at Minerva there is no such thing as a full scholarship, there's like a very large scholarship where they cover um, everything, like all of the tuition, and everything up to like what you have to pay is 1450 I think that's how much. And then after that you still have a loan though. I think it's a $5,000 loan per year. And so by the end you end up with $20,000 student debt, which you only have to pay interest for after you finish. However, throughout your Minerva experience, every month you pay part of your loan and it increases in amount as the years go by. Now, I don't know too much about it because I don't have a Minerva loan. I don't know exactly in terms of like how good that loan is compared to other loans. I'm not good enough in the topic to really say, but um, that's how that loan works. I would say a lot of people on scholarship have it. And then you have work study, which is basically a job you do throughout your time at Minerva and the hourly pay is 20 an hour and you do 10 hours a week. So per year you make up to 4,000. 500. The thing is, I'll be like really honest with you because I think it's really important for anybody applying to know is that there's a lot of extra costs that aren't necessarily portrayed. Um, so insurance is one of them and I know that they talk about it but it is like quite a hefty sum. It's usually about like 500 to 600 dollars per semester which is quite a bit and then there's also um, the visas which depending on the country you come from are more or less and where you're going obviously and then there's the flights which can be really expensive uh, depending on where you're starting and end point is so for instance um, going from Argentina to India is an awful lot um, and that is way more than let's say um what's a was a not expensive one Seoul to berlin wasn't that much so other costs i mean living in different countries expensive in some more than others Seoul and sf were so expensive berlin was reasonable argentina is great so if you do want a full scholarship though i kind of would recommend applying to more traditional u.s colleges if you do want to study in the U.S. because they do offer full scholarships that cover um, flights and food and clothing even. Um, so if you are like a really 
intelligent and like academically driven student that has like really really good grades um, you might benefit more from studying at um, these traditional schools that have a lot more money to fund students something to think about okay then specifically in terms of studying science and medicine i don't think minerva has the strongest natural science major because there are no labs and you can partner with local universities to work on projects but it's a little bit more self-driven and if you really do want to be like working in labs i think more traditional schools are also more suited for that now i don't want to deter you again from minerva but i don't think that major is as thorough as computational sciences and business which are like i guess minerva specialty i know that they don't want to call themselves special in any like specific major but i will say that those two are like very 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 good and then um the other ones are good i got a couple questions about transferring and while i don't know much about transferring to minerva because i did not um a lot of my friends had so emma my roommate from san francisco well, i remember her um she transferred from ucl so she did a year there and then she transferred to minerva because she didn't like it as far as i know you can't transfer into like second or third year you have to start from the beginning so you need to start from those like first year of your bachelor's degree and that's just because of the curriculum at Minerva you kind of wouldn't understand anything unless you started from first year because our grading is really weird I would say great transfers which is like a lot of transfer students I know people who've transferred after their third year so um, definitely something that you can do and you will not be alone uh, but just know that you can't skip like any of the years. I get sometimes questions about the age of Minerva students and honestly it's varied. There are people as young as 17 when they start and then on average the oldest is like 22 when you start, 23 maybe, and then um, there are a few students that are like 30 something. Um, that's definitely the minority but there are a couple so it's definitely doable to do a second bachelor's degree or your first one when you're much older um the age doesn't really matter here um i feel like it's not really obvious so there's also a question that is pretty recurring about the apartments and like how many roommates do you have um like details about that and so the roommates typically the arrangement is like two to four people i would say that's like pretty average so in san francisco it's rooms of three in the primary Turk Street residence and then in South Korea it's four or three but there are more rooms of four in Berlin it's rooms of two in Argentina it's rooms of two or four there are far fewer quad rooms and you do get to pick in your first year you don't you just fill out a room survey and then you get like randomly placed with people um well not randomly they still like take into account a lot of different factors and i would say they did a pretty good job for the most part um i met emma like closest friends emma Nerva, during my first year she was my roommate so the question that i get is do i struggle with being far from my family and i would say my first year i was okay i think i was still in like the adrenaline rush of like i'm an independent student studying abroad and I was really excited. I think now that I'm in my third year and I have like gone home and like really learned to appreciate and be grateful for where I'm from and my family and my friends back home, I do miss it a lot. Um, it's not like a, sorry. <laughs> it's not a like daily struggle because I still know like that I'll see them again. Like realistically, I know that I have other things I need to think about and focus on, but I think the more I go through like the Minerva experience, um, the more I miss home and I think I would like to go back. Then what do I do after Minerva? To be honest, I'm not 100% sure and it changes quite often. So it really depends on the job that I get, like the opportunities that come to me because I miss home a lot. I am considering getting a job like near home or at least something that like like access my home more easily whether it's like a cheap flight between where I am and my home city or um, if I get a job that's like drivable distance I don't know 
um, I haven't really fully decided. Again, it really depends on the opportunities I get because if I get like an amazing opportunity somewhere, I'm not gonna say no. And then the other option for me is to go to the UK. Depending on how good the London semester is, I've always dreamt of living in the UK, specifically Brighton. That is an option because I have a UK citizenship, so I could do that. Um, I'm still trying to decide if that's like feasible and if I would want to, but eventually I think I will live in the UK for some time. Another part of that is the fact that I kind of want to have more of a home base, so I want to make sure that the place I decide to live in is somewhere I can live in for at least a year. I feel like after Minerva, I'm really um, getting a little exhausted from the travels as much as I love it. I think constantly changing locations can be tiring. I don't like moving all my stuff around. Um, I would like to just have my things in one place um, and be able to like decorate it the way I want. I would like to pick something that's pretty stable for at least a year or two. And then in terms of careers, I'm currently working for a marketing agency as a freelancer and that's like both content writing and content design which I am enjoying especially the design part actually so I am thinking definitely something business and art related I mean those are my majors so it makes sense but I would like to work for a company that's sustainable ethical um, possible options are I'll put them on the screen I really want to work for a brand that I love um, and I like believe in and then potentially somewhere along the line starting my own business but I'm still not sure exactly what I would do for that obviously that has to be like something I think about pretty intensely so I'm not a hundred percent sure I'm also very open to having like several part-time jobs to try and figure out exactly what I want to do which is sort of what I'm doing at the minute where I try to like overlap internships and jobs just to see what aspects I do and don't like from each but that's right now what the plan is okay i get this question sometimes where am i from i feel like i make it pretty obvious i'm from canada i was born and raised in ottawa and i'm french canadian so my mom is from montreal my dad is from uh, the uk actually he's he was born in london yes that's all i could go into all the different kinds of white i am but um i'm not going to do that yeah, so I think that that is it for like the questions I get the most often. If you guys have any other questions, please feel free to leave them down below or DM me. I will try my best to answer all of them. Uh, if there's a lot, maybe I'll make a second video about it. But I hope this cleared up some frequently asked questions that I get. I wish you guys an amazing week and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!